Okay, so when we're discussing any white opening repertoire uh, for young players, we've got to start here after 1, E4, E5. Because let's face it, this is the position that's going to crop up in the majority of, of your games as a youngster. Um, I teach in a lot of schools um, at various levels, uh, from age, kids from the age of 5 up to the age of 18. And even very strong players see this position many, many times in their game. So it's very important to have something prepared as white against 1, E4, E5. Now, on this particular DVD, I'm going to recommend that white plays the Vienna game with 2, knight C3. It's an opening that's so little used these days, a lot of black players are going to be almost completely unfamiliar with it. And the basic ideas are so simple that they can be summarised in just a few sentences. The first basic idea behind 2, knight C3 is that it stops black from freeing his game with d7 to d5. This is the move black would love to play in the open games, and knight c3 dissuades black from playing that move. What you're going to find is that when you adopt the Vienna in a lot of your games, black players are going to play very, very passively because they've been actually stopped from playing their favourite move. So the first idea behind knight c3 is to deny black for as long as possible the move d5, or to make it unattractive. The second basic idea is that white wants to keep his f pawn ready to go to f4 to get some sort of improved version of the king's gambit. And I'm going to recommend an approach with f4 to you on this uh, DVD as a very aggressive and interesting way of playing um, with the white pieces. The main idea of playing f4, of course, is to open up the f file and to go to town against black's king side. So it's really a nakedly aggressive approach for white when you play the Vienna. And to illustrate this, I've selected a few games for you, the first of which comes from a Greek tournament in the year 2007, and it's between uh, an international master called Mastro Vasilis, he's a very strong player, and he's playing a Greek guy called Maloforis. And, um, well, we quickly see that the very strong player is happy to play the Vienna, and black plays knight f6, which is one of the traditional replies. Against this, I recommend white plays f4. And so here we see our game plan put into operation as early as possible. Now the main reason for um, showing you this game is that black falls immediately into white's trap, if you like, and takes on f4. Black thinks he's playing some type of king's gambit here, but in fact the Vienna move order makes it slightly different and, um, well, makes e takes f4 look like a mistake after e5. And already this is quite an awkward move for black to meet, because if you look at the position even remotely carefully, you'll see that black's knight has nowhere to go uh, but to return to his original square, which of course is completely undesirable. Um, well, in the game, black played knight g8, I mean, probably he has to. I suppose black can try queen e7 in this position. But after queen e2, it's the same thing. The knight has to return to base. And the black queen is on a very uncomfortable square because you can just imagine white's knight hopping into d5 in this position and gaining even more time. So basically, this is a completely unpromising variation for black. But uh, mark my words, a lot of your opponents are going to fall in for this trap. However, to get the opponent in a bad position is one thing, to win the game is quite another, so we should see how a strong master player approaches this position with the white pieces. Okay, well black returned to base with knight g8. Of course that can't be a good move, because it loses time. And white just simply brings the knight out to f3. Now black tries to catch up with d5. Okay, that's probably the best he can do. Um, and well, at least gives his pieces a little bit of freedom for moving. Okay, white plays pawn to d4, and now he's going to be able to get back the pawn he sacrificed earlier without tears, just simply bishop takes f4. This type of position is going to crop up in a lot of your games when you play the Vienna, and it's very, very nice for white, because white has potential pressure against the black king side, especially down the open f file. Let's see how this all works out. Okay, well, black tries to hassle the, the knight by playing knight to g6, sorry, the bishop, and the bishop just drops back to e3. And after his initial mistake, black now starts to play reasonably well. He brings out his pieces, and he prepares to castle. 
But white's pieces are much more actively and aggressively placed in this position. And Master of Asilis continues with the excellent move bishop to d3, eyeing up both sides of the board. You can't really find a better square for that bishop than d3. And black continues to play OK moves by playing bishop e6. All right, white plays queen d2. And now pawn up to a6. I think basically black is waiting for white to castle. Then he's going to commit his king. If white castles on the king side, black's probably going to go king side too. But if white castles on the queen side, I believe black is waiting for that. And then he's probably going to bring his knight out to c6, his queen up to d7, and then he's going to castle on the queen side too. The reason is, of course, he's petrified of white crushing him with some big attack in an opposite side's castling situation. But as the game continues, both sides continue to develop their pieces. Knight g5 is an excellent move here. Um, Attacking the bishop on e6, which black can only defend with queen to d7. White locks off the bishop, queen takes e6, and now castles on the king side. Okay, that was the move black was waiting for, and castles in kind, but of course white has a big advantage in this position. And you will see, despite the fact that the white king is actually on the king side of this position, white can still build up a massive king side attack. The key piece for white, well, one of his key pieces, of course, is, of course, the bishop on d3, because that is the piece black can't oppose. So, therefore, we're looking for white to strike on the light squares, to strike against h7 and f7, because as black hasn't got a light square bishop, these will be very vulnerable squares in his camp. In fact, the whole black king side is vulnerable, as you're going to see, and Master Vasilis started to move his pieces across to the king side, to start an all-out attack, hence the move knight e2. The knight's not going to stay on e2 for long, and now comes across to the intimidating square g3. Well, when you're under fire like black is in this game, the idea is you don't sit there idle, you try to prepare some counterplay. So black hits back with the move c5, but I'm afraid it's already too little too late, because white is still able to shunt his pieces into beautiful positions. And now we see the knight, the bishop on d3, in fact both white's bishops, the rook on the open f file, all working in tandem against the poor old black king. Alright, black tries to push the white bishop back from his aggressive post, and of course white is happy to just drop back, he's only a temporary lull in proceedings. Black plays knight d7, and now Master Vasilis starts to show his brilliance. He plays the excellent move now, Bishop h6. This is a beautiful move, and quite unexpected in a way, because, um, well, I was expecting white to strike on the light squares. But here, as you can see, he's striking at g7, which just goes to show you that white has opportunities against all the black king side pawns in this position. Well, what is black to do? I mean, he can't actually defend g7. He's probably got to take that bishop and hope that he can survive. But, of course, the queen comes in now to h6, threatening checkmate. There's no other way for black to play apart from to play the miserable move bishop f6. White is, of course, happy to remove that. And for a moment, it looks as though black is defending himself with queen takes f6. But now comes the entry of the light square bishop into the game, bishop to g4. And all of white's pieces are now basically joining the party. When you're attacking, it's best to attack with everything you've got. And so white is gradually bringing all his pieces into play. Um... The poor position of Black's king, of course, makes it very, very difficult to suggest any sensible moves for Black. He just hasn't got any moves. His king is too weak. Knight comes to b6. Pawn up to h4. Another white unit joins the fray. So white is adding fuel to the flames. He's threatening now the move h5, which will take advantage of the pin knight. The knight's actually pinned against the queen. That knight can't move, or Black will lose his queen. So poor old black just retreats to d7. He really can't think of what to do. He's hopelessly placed here. And white continues to pile on the pressure with h5. This really is quite an easy game to understand, actually. White just piling on the moves. Pressure moves. Hitting black with all he's got. Okay, knight h4. And no way does white want the queen exchanged in this position. Um, the black queen is exposed. White's now threatening knight h6 check winning the queen. So black's got to take that off. But of course that brings the bishop into the game now. And um, well, once again we see just how hopeless the black cause is. 
Note the active white book on F1. White's already threatening to take on H7. Check. We call that a discovered attack. And after that, the black queen is lost. It's very important to notice that black's knight is also attacked by the white bishop. So all this means black's only got one move. He's got to retreat his queen to e7, but of course the queen is now moving away from the king. And this gives white the chance to launch a final strike. His bishop takes d7. Now, you never normally play that move in this position because you're giving up a fantastic attacking bishop for a knight that's doing nothing. But actually, when you can calculate a forced win, if a move has to be played, it must be played. So bishop takes d7, leads to a forced win. We can't criticise white for that. And now white moves in for the kill. Queen g5, check. King goes to h8. Queen comes to f6, check. The poor old black king must come back to g8. Pawn up to h6, it really is simple now. Queen must come into g4 to defend the threat of uh, queen g7 mate. And now the final winning move, rook comes up to f5. And seeing no way, well there is no way to stop uh, rook g5 check, black resigned. That's a typical Vienna game. Um, admittedly the white player was much stronger than the black player, but it does show you how possible it is, how likely it is that you can uh, get a big attack going against the enemy king if he castles on the quick king side in the Vienna. A superb game by White.